how to receive the gift of speaking in tongues. How do you speak in tongues? I know many of you would like to know how, so let's consult some of the experts. But I can tell you how to pray in supernatural languages. So you start speaking like little baby words. You mean like when my grandson was learning how to speak? Like that, or is there a better way to do it? Just keep your eyes closed and just put your eyes under God and open up your mouth, open up your tongue. It's going to sound very weird. It's going to sound like mutters or just ba ba ba. So if it's going to sound very weird, is that kind of like instead of speaking in tongues, is that more like babbling in tongues? When I first started out praying in tongues, it was very small syllables. And then it, as I prayed more often every single day, it got more deeper and it got more developed. Yeah, but is there kind of like a step-by-step -step guide? So here we go. Abba. Abba Sala. Derese. Okay, I'm not really feeling it. Is there some more advice you can give me? What I want you to do is really press in because you're gonna yeah. you're gonna feel like almost like a whale. It's like when they're digging for oil. Yep. It says it's gonna flow out of your belly, belly like rivers of living water. You you're gonna feel these rivers just flow up, and it's almost like a spiritual drain. -o. Some of you might start manifesting. You might have all Come kinds on. of deliverance might start happening but don't don't be satisfied just speaking in a little bit let it break through and it's almost going to come up like a machine gun and say them as fast as you humanly can you don't move your tongue and speak no one else will do it you'll be told by many people that you should speak in tongues that you should desire to speak in tongues and that there is a way to go about doing it and that those who will teach you how to do it. There are those that will give you the proper frame of mind, the way your heart ought to be, the way your mouth ought to just let it come out. And either you can do it in steps, in stages, if you will. The problem is, do we see that in scripture? Is there a such passage? Again, if there's no example of what someone is talking about, if there's no example of what someone is saying, if it cannot be found in the Bible, then by definition, it is unbiblical. There are those that will tell you that God wants you to speak in tongues. Now you must understand that it is the will of God for every believer to speak in tongues. No, it's not. It is not God's will that all should speak in tongues. And notice how he says it, speak in tongues. Those two words that he has, the speak, aleo, and tongues, glosai. So you're going to keep saying that over and over again when the Bible talks about speaking in tongues. Well, God literally says through Paul in 1 Corinthians 12, 29, that not all do so. As a matter of fact, he says, me pantais apollosai which is not all are apostles, are they? And if we drop down to verse 30, it says, not all speak with tongues, do they? And notice how it's written. He says, me pantes glosis lalusin. This is what he said. He said, it's God's will that all should speak in tongues. But literally he says, Paul says, not all are, are tongues speaking. So therefore that would be a direct contradiction of what he is saying compared to what Paul is saying. I think we ought to go with what Paul is saying. God is not desiring for all to speak in tongues. Now, the question is, can you desire to speak in tongues? Well, Paul addresses that also just a few verses earlier. In 1 Corinthians 12, 11, he says, but one and the same spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills, as he's desired, as he's planned, as he's prepared. That is what the Holy Spirit does. Not you. It's not up to you to desire it. You might want to. You might want to do a lot of different things. You might want to be a great singer. You might want to be an awesome athlete. You might want to be a great artist. All those things are nice to want to do. And in some cases, you could probably train for. But this you can't. This is something that the Holy Spirit gives you as he wills. But now, some will say that you have to actually have a desire. As a matter of fact, you've got to kind of get out of this old way of thinking, change your mind, if you will. And when I began to read my scriptures without my denominational glasses on, it became real to me that the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues was valid for today. Denominational glasses or a lack of doubt or anything else, those aren't reasons why people don't speak in tongues. Now, let's go ahead and for the sake of this argument, assume that the speaking in tongues in the Bible is just like the speaking in tongues today. Oh, by the way, 
it's not. But for the sake of this argument, whatever your proclivities are, whatever your desires are, whatever it is you want, none of that, how much faith or lack of faith, none of that is determinative, and at least in the scriptures, of anyone having to speak in tongues. Remember, if we go back to the very first time that it happened on the day of Pentecost, they had no idea, the disciples, the apostles had no idea what was going to happen. They were simply told one thing by Jesus. They were told this by him in John 15, and they were had it reiterated to them in Acts 1 that they'll receive the Holy Spirit and they will be his witnesses. They had no idea. As a matter of fact, their thought pattern was about restoring the kingdom of heaven to Israel. That was what they were thinking. And Jesus says, it's not for you to know the times, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall be my witnesses. There's no mention of, by Jesus to them of them speaking in tongues. So they, they were not desiring to speak in tongues. Now, were they forbidding it? No. Were they against it? No. And by the way, I don't know anyone else that is forbidding actual tongues again. And I know I said for the sake of this argument that what we're seeing today are tongues, but no one's forbidding what we saw in Acts. What do we see in Acts? We see on Acts 2, we see, and, and suddenly there came a sound, a heaven, a noise like a violent rushing wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributed on, on themselves and they rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the Spirit was giving them utterance. And so it's important to recognize that it's not you and your desire to speak in tongues. It's the Holy Spirit. So assuming that what we see today is true, which, by the way, it's not. As a matter of fact, I can't continue that. What we're seeing today is nothing like what we see in the Bible. But if a person is saying, well, the reason why you don't speak in tongues, which, oh, by the way, I did some 30 years ago, just like everyone else is doing today, sounded just like them. I felt the same way. And everyone else who supposedly had the spirit thought the same thing. But it was never, nor was it in the Bible, an issue of a person wanting to do it. Nowadays, it's people who are desiring to do so. But then they had no desire. They had no clue of it. And so every time we see in the Bible that someone spoke in tongues, it was always the Holy Spirit come upon them and moving. If a person is to be um, is to be speaking in tongues, if a person, as a matter of fact, is to have any sort of gifting that's outwardly visible or even inward that is going to be brought about by the Holy Spirit, it's the Holy Spirit that's going to come about. Remember, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, he is going to move you. Even in cases where the person uh, had no idea or had no desire. Think about Saul in the Old Testament. When the Spirit came upon him, he didn't desire it. He wasn't looking for it. And he began to prophesy. Similarly here, you don't pray for anything. Where in the scriptures do we see the person praying for the Holy Spirit, receiving it, and then they speak in tongues? Praying, Lord, please give me the ability to speak in tongues. Lord, can you please, I have faith to speak in tongues. We don't see that. And so there is no such thing as you having a desire to speak in tongues. There's no such thing as you praying to speak in tongues. There's no such thing as anyone requesting to speak in tongues and then them doing so. In Acts 10, 44, the Bible says, when Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who were listening to the message. All the circumcised believers who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Verse 46, for they were hearing them speaking with tongues and exalting God. Now, Notice these Gentiles, they weren't desiring of it. The Bible doesn't say they were looking for it. It just happened. And it happened to give validity to the Jews. One, that not only that the Jews could speak in these languages, but also that these Gentiles signifying they had the Holy Spirit as well. And also as a sign to unbelieving Jews. Now, to make the point even more so, if we look at another group, we can clearly see they had no desire to speak in tongues. They didn't know about tongues. They didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. Who am I speaking of? I'm speaking of John's disciples in Acts chapter 19. In verse 2 of 19, he's asked, he asked them and said to them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they said to him, no, we have not even heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So they don't even know that there is a Holy Spirit, much less that there are tongues, whether there is a Holy Spirit. And he said, verse 3, uh, into what then were you baptized? I said, into John's baptism. So what does Paul say? John baptized with repentance, telling the people to believe in him who was coming after him, that is in Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Holy Spirit, or I'm sorry, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul laid hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began to speak with tongues and prophesying. So what happened? 
the Holy Spirit comes, as he says in Acts, as well as what he says in 1 Corinthians 12, it's the Holy Spirit that is the one that causes it to happen. It's not you praying for it. So how do you speak in tongues? Step one, place your faith in Christ. Step two, receive the Holy Spirit. Step three, nothing. You wait for the Holy Spirit to do so. If the Holy Spirit moves you to speak in what we see in the scriptures, that's tongues, by the way. It's languages. It's the Holy Spirit's move, not yours. You can't make yourself do anything in the Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. It's not that we want to have spiritual gifts. It's that we have the Spirit. That's what it is. The word pneumaticon that's used are, is the things of the Spirit, the spiritual things. We have the Spirit. So however he moves is however he moves, and we can't determine how he's going to do so. And if it just so happens to look like what we see in the Bible, well, then praise God. But until it does, then we'll just keep relying on our scriptures. You know the very same scriptures that he says that we should be like babes desiring milk. We should desire those same words. That's what we'll continue to do and draw closer to him rather than worrying about how to do something that we think we actually need when all we really need is his word. Amen. Oh.